Basically, the idea here is to is to uh, show you an update of a, of a research project in which we have been uh, involved in the last uh, three years, or well, two years and a half. The three years will be uh, finished today, uh, today this at the end of the year, and we will finish the project. And it's something that this is a continuation of an effort that we uh, started some time ago on, um, on orchestration, on, on, on exploring the limits of orchestration and trying to contribute some of the results uh, to the ongoing efforts in, in uh, some of the uh, orchestration open source uh, projects. It's a, it's a project that was born with these uh, four goals. Basically, if you think about it, it's about uh, precisely simplifying how uh, Network services were going to be uh, orchestrated, enhancing them. Uh, first of all, making it uh, uh, well swifter in terms of uh, facilitating the uh, shortening the time required for the deployment of, uh, of new systems, and shortening as well the time uh, regarding uh, onboarding and all the uh, difficult process uh, around orchestration. Well, for sure. Um, Providing, and this is something that is we are required in all the research projects we start, is about uh, providing new business opportunities. The idea here, it was uh, trying to, uh, uh, well, to, um, to to make easier uh, to new participants uh, to to get engaged and to identify uh, new, uh, new new ways of. Uh, I would not say of monetizing what is already there, but this is precisely about identifying, uh, simplifying the way in which new partners could play in the uh, in the same uh, uh, in the same playground to facilitate their their revenues. Third is about uh, lowering, and this is something that is very important. We're talking about transformation, SEN, NFE, whatever. Is lowering the barrier is uh, something that uh, well, some of you here know that this getting involved in the network providing services uh, is uh, quite complicated because it's expensive, it requires time, etc. And the idea is to simplify the process, providing the tools. We cannot change the business processes, but we can try to make the the, the tools better, and uh, well, making making the the adoption of uh, virtualization technologies a little bit easier. That's uh, with these goals. Uh, well, the uh, the uh, <clears throat> the project decided to follow. Uh, a life cycle that is oriented to services, and this is something that, uh, in that respect, this project tried to go in the same, uh, or following the, the same spirit that was, this, uh, was discussed originally inside, uh, um, inside, for example, projects like, like OSM, which this project is quite connected to. So the idea is that to focus on the, on the building of, uh, of services, not so important in functions of VNFs. We, are, we keep talking about VNFs and the VNF descriptors and all the like. But in the, uh, from the point of view of, of managing the whole, uh, the whole life cycle, what is important is a, is a, is a service-oriented approach. So the idea is that we identify the, the three phases that are related to uh, to service provisioning is about, uh, well, it's, it's not anything original if you look at it. It's, uh, you, you have the developer, you have the uh, validation and verification, and you have the deployment and the operation of the service. Nothing uh, uh, specifically new. This is, a, but taking into account, this is a life cycle. This is not intended to be, and this, the, the, uh, the development in the project is not intended to uh, facilitate a waterfall modeling what somebody develops, somebody tests. Uh, you uh, deploy and you forget is about precisely facilitating the fact that while you are operating the system, a developer can make a, an update. That update will be facil uh, will be uh, uh, validated by the uh, by the WAF uh, provider, and this will be uh, redeployed once and again. As I said, this is about facilitating DevOps, facilitating CI/CD, whatever you call it, by providing the necessary tools and identifying that they are. Different roles, and this is the architecture is based precisely on these roles, on these uh, elements in the life cycle. We are talking about uh, that. Uh, well, everything is um, mediated uh, by uh, by a, co a common set of catalogs. In what you what you have is basically, and we will see that uh, later on. What you have is the descriptors of the services and the components of those services that are describing those services, and those descriptors got updated 
by the different roles, by different, if you look at it, the architecture, with the exception of the operational environment that is a little bit more demanding, precisely in terms of uh, what you can have it, or what you need for having real operations in terms of the uh, infrastructure, etc. In both, the, the other both cases are very, very, very similar. In the sense that what you have is an SDK for running the, uh, the development with the possibility of making an initial validation and that then you enable the whole thing to happen in a, in a separated environment that is dedicated precisely to uh, validation and verification. And once everything's in place, you are allowed somehow to uh, move on to uh, onto, uh, uh, the operation environments. The idea is that this whole cycle can be as much automated as possible. And let me say on the as much automated as possible because at the end, uh, what, one of the things that you need precisely when it, today we were talking about operations precisely and somebody, uh, we were talking that one of the essential operation activities are uh, the, uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, putting the blame on the one who made the, the things uh, not going well. And this is important as well. And at the end, you need all the automation mechanisms at the end required as well a human that is the one who was, is responsible for doing whatever. This is facilitated and we will uh, hear as well and we will see how. Well, basically, this is the architecture in more detail in which you can see again that the, uh, there is a common catalogs and they are the common relationship among the different, uh, uh, the different model, the, the different elements in the, uh, in the general with the different roles and how they, they are, um, how everything is, uh, is uh, somehow mediated by, by oh, as, as I said, with the common catalog. And then what, what you have is a different data repositories that are relevant for providing or accessing relevant data from the uh, running uh, operations or relevant uh, information about the, uh, the services and the functions that are going to be uh, deployed. So going, going into a little bit more of detail, uh, something that is important is that everything is model-based. Everything inside 5G Tango is uh, based on that uh, of a set of uh, descriptors that are including, on the one hand, services. On the other hand, they are including the, the functions. And those descriptors are based, generally speaking, based on what Etsy and NV has done. And I'm talking about generally speaking because they are standard. And they are standard precisely what is more important is on this, what is called their package layering, the idea is that the units that we are moving in, in for a for a set uh, for a service is precisely the composition of the descriptor of the package and the uh, um, corresponding results of of the tests or the validation procedures that have gone through the services have gone through in the in the past. So in the moment you are going to make any operation with a service, you can make a an analysis that you, have, you really have information about which tests uh, were run, which were the results, and you can have even a, a, histo uh, a history of what happened with the different versions. So the decision about what to do with a service can be taken precisely uh, um, based on the, uh, on the uh, previous history of the testing and the validation. Apart, uh, apart from that, well, there are some particularities regarding the 5G Tango that are somehow connected, and this is something that was uh, reported as well to HCNFV, is about the idea that uh, certain, com uh, certain functions can have dedicated components which are not part of the function, I mean, they are part of the function descriptor, not part of the function itself, but they have some functional influence. That would simplify the uh, deployment, etc. This is something that was contributed to to the NFV group still under discussion. For the developers, something that is important is that apart of having a, a service development kit that helps in the and this is something that you think at, for example, ONAP and their, and their design phase is basically the, uh, this, the, the SDK is there for, for uh, facilitating this. Uh, the idea is that is, uh, uh, it helps in, the, in facilitating how the service is built and how it's described. Packaging, packaging is something that is delicate and is something that uh, having something help, uh, helping you is, uh, is uh, quite valuable. And something that is, uh, has been uh, an interesting contribution is that you have the possibility of making an initial validation based on an emulator. You have an environment in which you have an emulated, um, an emulated um, uh, cloud environment in which you can make a f an initial deployment, an initial, you can initially exercise the uh, 
<clears throat> the descriptor and validate it, and they uh, somehow they are connected with that kind of, of environment in which you're run, going to run the, uh, the validation. That allows, and this is something that we try to uh, illustrate in several places, is about that you are a service developer with your laptop, wherever you are, you are able to make an initial validation without going elsewhere. <coughs> when it comes to verifying and validating, everything is based precisely on, a, on an environment. It's a reduced lab-like environment, if you like, in which you have uh, the possibility of running different tests. You have a set, a, a library of tests that can be executed as much automated as possible, and that's important as well. So, and you can collect those data and input into inside the, uh, the, 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 the descriptors of the services. So, <coughs> This, uh, this can be done on a, well, sort of connected with something that would be like uh, you have continuous integration, you can have continuous testing whenever that a, a function has changed. You can uh, apply the new tests and put them inside the, the, the historic about the, uh, about the evolution and the results of the test. And what is important is that uh, currently it's multi-platform. You can, you can use uh, OSM. Um, that, because this group has been contributed to OSM, or well, something that is, let's say, the evolved version that is OSM Plus that is on it. This is the flow when you, when you make a uh, um, full uh, verification and validation, and essentially what is important is that there are three roles that are completely independent, and that would allow precisely the idea that you have a service developer that is defining the service, collecting the functions, making the service descriptors, building the whole thing. There would be a test prescriptor or a test developer, whatever you call it, that is writing the, uh, the tests, is defining them, is, uh, is analyzing what is required to pass a certain set of tests for a given service or providing which are the, 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 the test suite for a, a family, a, a particular family of services, and there are the, uh, the uh, operator that will execute the test and will be able to analyze which are the results and make a decision on whether something is suitable or not. Let me insist, all these, I mean, well, what, what is not the direct provision, all this can be automated, but it's important that the identities are clearly uh, defined so you can trace, clearly trace how and where decisions were taken. Well, the main features of, uh, of this, is, as I said, is about the, the automation. That is uh, something that can be, uh, uh, can be uh, defined. Uh, the, the, text plan, the test plan sorry, can be uh, automati um, automa ah, sorry, automatically executed as much as possible. Um, the, uh, the reporting is uh, in integrated with, uh, with the... Uh, uh, with everything that is, I mean, with part of the catalog, and it's not anything different. It's part of the uh, of the service description itself, and something that is important as well is that uh, the uh, uh, you can use is not only uh, it's not only validation testing. You can execute other kind of testing, and you can even uh, using um, a model based telemetry. Uh, a framework in which we have been working precisely is about collecting some measurements and using this for, as evidence for the test as well. Uh, in the case of service platform, uh, the service platform, when we, uh, where we made a report of these uh, results of the project some time ago, the service platform was not ready yet, but basically the service platform is, uh, is for sure is, uh, is about, uh, um, for sure, the, the, the uh, management and orchestration, policy enforcement, um, dealing with SLA, monitoring that I said is essential is part as well of the, of the service definition, is part of the, not only of the validation, but of the collection of data about how the service is, uh, and well, something that is, I mean, say they are for sure, but this, it was not for sure original, it's about slice support. Where we believe that is the first environment in which you can make a real orchestration of, uh, of uh, slicing is, uh, I mean, the service platform, you use a service platform both for running the services and, and for validating. The, the, the only thing is that in the case of the validation scenario, you have additional probes on the one hand, and it's not oriented to a performance, but ras uh, rather to, to validate it. And as I said before, everything is mediated by an element that we call the gatekeeper that keeps track of the identities 
of the different identities and what they executed, when they executed it, on what they, ex they make the execution, and take some decisions about whether it is, uh, some, some action is feasible or not. The service platform is, called, is based on this, so that uh, the Sonata orchestration release that has been uh, uh, release five was launched at the beginning of October, if, I, if I'm right. Uh, well, you have it uh, available, and is uh, is uh, I would say is uh, the most advanced orchestration NFE orchestration framework uh, I'm aware of, in terms of incorporating new features. Because among other things, let me say it's a research activity. Being a research activity has goes a little bit beyond. Probably is not uh, now if uh, this is being recorded, so I don't I won't say that it's not bullet proof. But well, it's uh, it's, a, it's a result of a research project, and it's a. Uh, the important thing is that, is that um, the most, let's say, stable features have been contributed as well to OSM. So this is part, I mean, and in particular, for example, the emulator was something that was extremely useful for, for having a life cycle as well, you know, a service-oriented life cycle running in OSM. And some results have been uh, contributed as well to NFE in, in forms of proof of concepts and participation in the black tests. And well, this is a list of the uh, of the main characteristics of the, uh, or, or at least the main goals that the uh, service framework has in, in in terms of uh, well re um, resilience, the, the support of uh, of uh, edge uh, the, of edge facilities, the capability, and I would say that this is my view is one of the most important things is precisely the support of, of model based monitoring that can allow for a much better metering of what's going on and that enabling uh, the uh, verification of, or the automated verification of SLAs. And as I said before, the idea that is the first uh, service environment in which uh, we believe that we are co uh, really uh, completely covering uh, the support of a, of a complete slicing model. And that's all. If you are curious about it, you have it at uh, the uh, the links and the uh, and the Twitter account. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Diego, you said that this is the result of a research project. Is there some company commercializing that, or what will happen? Uh, with the software you developed within the research project? Well, the, the, uh, the, the software, the whole software is available. It's freely available. It's open source. You can use it. Uh, I would say, so far, I'm not aware of any company commercializing the Sonata as it is. Mm -hmm. But as I said before, most, most of the, or the most stable features have been contributed to, uh, uh, to OSM. So they are part of, of the OSM distribution. If you want to, but for sure, if you want to play with it, go for it, use it. It's, it's free and, it's, and, and the whole project will be more than happy of uh, knowing about it. The plan, probably we will continue with some of this, with uh, part of the, uh, of the orchestration uh, features in some other projects and we will keep improving it. But likely it will be contributed. I mean, normally what we try to do is to go to a project, a bigger project like uh, OSM that has a, a higher traction. That's... Thank you. Thank you, Diego. Thank you.